Okay, I'm Andrzej Lusenski mm -hmm. and I am a professor emeritus uh, from the University of New Hampshire in the United States. And it is my real pleasure to get acquainted with you and to participate in this uh, uh, session. Uh, right now, I enjoy life in Poland. Uh, the weather is very nice and uh, I am ready to answer any questions you may have today. So thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Michael, for, uh, Andrzej, sorry, for starting the introductions. Perhaps, yeah, we should go around and just say it briefly. Um, so, Vyacheslav, do you want to start first? Uh, okay. Uh, good, good day. Um, one, one more. Um, dear colleagues, I'm Vyacheslav Harchenko. I'm a professor and head of the Department of Computer System Network and Cyber Security of National Aerospace University, uh, Kharkiv, Ukraine. Uh, now, um, um, as you know, we have very hard uh, time um, because um, the war with uh, Russia. Uh, but we uh, uh, are continuing our work, work and our resistance. And um, I think our project, uh, our book is a um, very, um, very important um, uh, point in um, in uh, this uh, this time, considering uh, COVID time and considering the war, um, it's my pleasure to participate in these uh, meetings and um, work with uh, my colleagues uh, um, Andrzej, Mikhail, and Cohen. Thank you. So, would you like to go? Yeah. So, my name is Kuhn uh, Vagulik. <coughs> I'm uh, I'm a researcher at TNO, senior researcher at TNO. I was a full professor in England for five years on railway safety, where we worked on digitalization of safety management systems with, you know, intensifying data density on the railways. Uh, and I, I guess I was one of the earlier, you know, authors in, in the domain of safety and, and, and data, at least on some parts of it. And uh, um, I got involved with the University of Selenia and with the Verschlaf uh, about a year and a half ago on big data and safety and more or less we got the discussion going about why wouldn't we write something good on this space where there seems to be a lot of interest but not that much well s sensitive information around so uh, to some extent you know we more or less found each other as we moved along i i tend to it uh, so, so i'm an academic by training but these days i'm a, mm -hmm. a bit more oriented towards the application area and uh and business side of things, so I tend to write a bit more from a business perspective. So that's my background. Yeah, fantastic, <laughs> thank you. And um, finally, but no means least, uh, Michael, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I, would... I think we, we lost him. Okay, maybe okay. Uh, maybe, we'll start, start, maybe we'll... you can say something on behalf of yeah, Michael. Yes, I, I, I can a few words about uh, Professor Mikhail Yastrybinetsky. Mm -hmm. uh, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Srebinetsky is um, uh, one of the most famous specialists in Ukraine, and, and I think not only in the area uh, safety of the nuclear power plants instrumentation control system. He is founder of um, Department of uh, Instrumentation Control System uh, Safety and Security in National uh, Center of uh, Radiation and Nuclear uh, Safety. Um, um, the main uh, interest of uh, um, Mikhail is the uh, aspect of regulation and assurance of safety and reliability of uh, instrumentation control system for nuclear, not, not only. I, uh, it's my honor to cooperate with uh, Mikhail a lot of time um, in the area, in the area um, uh, development of standards, uh, and other project uh, on um, safety of uh, instrumentation control system for nuclear uh, assessment and assurance. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and yes, uh, I'm Philippa Jeffries, as I'm here every week, and I also have hands from Cybersecurity Magazine. Um, yeah, and we're very pleased to be here to talk to you all about um, the topic of big safety, which is um, something that you're working on a book on at the moment, kind of what it is, how it can be used, um, and this kind of thing. So we thought now especially would be a great time to have a discussion around this topic. Um, so yes, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're so glad you could all make it. 
Um, we have numerous points we want to cover, but perhaps to start with, our first question is kind of what exactly is big safety and what aspects does it cover? Um, who would like to go first? Perhaps Fir Chisab? Well, maybe I will start uh, okay. as, the, as the oldest once again here. So, well, typically, if we do not have those special ex circumstances today, uh, ex experiencing the whole world is experiencing obviously what's happening with COVID and what's happening in Ukraine. I would say that the idea of big safety belongs to the category of uh, disruptive innovation. And uh, the claim I'm making here is based on several factors. Uh, one factor is obviously uh, the urgent issue of considering issues not only related to safety and security on a global scale. And a good example is it was mentioned here already in the discussion about the uh, sort of notion of big data. Okay, so this big data and big safety, the word big is as ex exactly the same what we are trying to address. So that's uh, one path which we can use as a heritage which prompt us to the development of this new uh, type of science. Now, another uh, example which I would like to mention, which may be relevant, is uh, the work which has been conducted uh, in the United States around the issue of Homeland Security. Uh, homeland Security, not only that it was questioned in terms of uh, their efficiencies, uh, was done sort of on an ad hoc basis. In other words, Homeland Security is uh, connected with critical infrastructures, uh, most likely depending on pra practicum of uh, safety and security rather than science. So when you combine these two things together, an example of big data and Homeland Security, we are just editing uh, a scientific component into it. As a, as a result, we have this concept of big safety, which we consider uh, quite important and relevant. And as I said, emphasized by the fact that uh, we have to save the planet right now. So we are hoping that uh, this big safety would be one of the tools trying to address important grand challenges facing the planet. And so this, this is what I would like to say uh, as an introduction. Okay, I, I could add a few words if mm -hmm. it's possible. Mm -hmm. In the framework of our book, we we talk about big safety as a combination of a different kind of big. It's a, as said, Andre, big data. It's a big system or complex system. It's a big attributes such as safety, functional safety and. Uh, security, cyber security, physical security, fire security, and new uh, new issues related to um, infection security, and 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 so on. Hence, uh, big safety is a crossing of um, all aspects related to safety and security, considering new challenges during last last uh, uh, two years. In, including uh, COVID time, including the war and uh, uh, aspect of military military kind of uh, safety. We will talk about these issues uh, as well. Hence, uh, in this case, we can talk uh, about uh, about tolerate of um, negative synergetic influence, the all side of uh, safety and security. And so it is uh, one of the main point, as I think, for, uh, for our book. This already gives us a little bit of an idea of what kind of challenges um, uh, you're trying to address with, with this topic of, of big safety. Um, maybe, uh, Kuhn, can you provide us with a couple of examples for domains where big safety is, is crucial or where that would be required? Yeah, so we haven't actually practiced this, okay? So maybe that's clear for you to understand that we haven't actually <laughs> But uh, just just two points, maybe just two points on the, on the comments made before. So, uh, uh, what I let's say, I've been in this domain for a long time, okay, and I've been in four universities and I've seen you know hundreds of businesses struggling with safety. One of the things is that this, this whole digital transformation which is going on, most safety experts don't even know much about. 
Okay, so that's 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 one of the challenges that it, that's, this will also, I, from my perspective, hopefully address that, you know, especially people that say in the safety culture side really just abhor anything technology and, and software even worse, but they, I, my message would be here, you can't ignore this anymore, right? This world is here, the data is, the world is connected, there's huge problems, you need to do something about it and just to do interviews about safety culture is not going to be enough. So that, that I think would be an important message here. And I think Andre, you know, Gave an elegant way of well, elegant way of, of explaining that. Now, Vaishlav, uh, he didn't stress it as well. I'd like to stress it again. He actually wrote down in earlier papers ten characteristics of what makes big safety big, which are really measures, indicators telling you if you're in a, either of these domains, you should worry about these kinds of problems that we we well we we now term uh, big safety, and especially where the interference takes place, and that could be let's say chemical industry, where chemical plants are remotely operated before you'd have the people on plants, operating plants, you know, pretty much knowing what's going on. Now, if you go to Honeywell, they'll have a, you know, a, 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 a computer control center for chemical plants in Houston, controlling factories, you know, hundreds of miles away or even on the side of the planet. So it becomes a really digitalized world, which has changed quite a bit. So that's where, you know, lots of information come together not everybody understands what's going on and certainly people on the workplace themselves who actually you know hear something ticking or blowing or i mean have seen flames may have no idea what the situation is because they don't have access to the data other areas where your know, loads of informations are are relevant is typically in in well already digitized areas where ai is introduced and that's also where there's an important change in european european legislation with the introduction of the ai um, uh, uh, regulation, the AI regulation, because that will that asks of pretty much anyone who has a machine with a computer in it to store all the data for at least a year for investigations. That means loads and loads of information will not only have to be stored, but also have to be, you know, queried for errors or, or used in, in investigations. So there's an awful lot of new uh, uh, information stored as well. So in relation not just to industries, but also to legislation, there's really a demand for much better understanding of how data, big data, and safety experts within them are relevant. And um, we, we, we can add uh, about um, domain um, in our um, um, view most important. Uh, in point of view, uh, big safety. Is in, uh, for example, nuclear power plants. This yes. instrumentation control with uh, digital infrastructure and, and and so on. Because in this case, we have uh, different attributes of, of safety, and um, in, including cybersecurity as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, but we, uh, 20, 15 years ago, we think. Uh, uh, that um, uh, instrumentation control system of nuclear power plants are a completely uh, closed uh, system, not open for cyber attacks. But now, now, the, now the, the, there are risks uh, with um, uh, and the threats uh, of different uh, in, in intrusion into such system. Uh, and um, during last 10 or more years, uh, there are a lot of new standards um, uh, have been developed uh, developed uh, related to to this issue. Hence, uh, um, uh, for such system, we have such uh, a similar a similar problem. Hence, we need to to um, consider to research problem of safety jointly with security and other issues, uh, other other side of safety and security as well. Thank you. I mean, just to going back to which industry, I mean, there's no industry is not affected, okay? Mm -hmm. Railways, massive data systems, uh, nuclear, massive data systems, air transport. I mean, there's no one that's not, not actually, I mean, if you're a woodcutter, right, sitting in the forest cutting, I don't know, owls or something, maybe you don't have that information, but even then you'd probably be connected somehow. That wouldn't be a different problem in that sense, but I mean, there's no significant, production industry that does not suffer from these kinds of problems. 
Yes, yes, I would like to. I wanted to keep according to the script, but the discussion is getting into the direction which is so interesting. So I cannot, I cannot just <laughs> start by making two comments. And the first comment I would like to make to follow up what we are trying to talk about is a paradox of this risk what we are facing right now. The range of the risk is global, but it can be triggered by a single individual on planet. So there is this paradox that you know the essentially our future, our, our fate depends on an individual. We do not even know what his name might be. Okay, so that's that's a new phenomenon. And another thing, what uh, what we are talking about, different examples of industries which are affected and uh, relevant, absolutely. But I would like to stress that we should not only look at the existing industries, but because of the impact of the Internet of Things and AI and other factors, we should be looking at the industries which we have no idea what they are going to be five years yeah. from now. And uh, I can guarantee that uh, they also they would require this big safety and big security. So we cannot just think about uh, the status quo, what 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 is existing as of today, but we have to look into the future as well and be ready uh, uh, for for what's coming, which is not going to be a, a, a nice picture. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, that 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 obviously um, shows how how big the the frame is that we're looking at and and how difficult to to grasp that is even in in one single book and one single conversation. So. Maybe if exactly. we focus if we focus on on one specific exactly. area, uh, which in in the context of, of our publication is usually cybersecurity. Um, what are some of the um, challenges that um, you know have have come to to light that probably have existed before, but that have especially come to light in the last uh, two years, as you mentioned, with uh, the, the pandemic, uh, everyone switching to remote work uh, with the um, obviously one in Ukraine right now. So if you can can provide your, your thoughts on that, whoever, <laughs> please, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I can start if, if it's possible. Um, uh, when uh, COVID time is uh, begun, uh, began, uh, we, for, we, we, we started to work with our, our, our book, with our idea of big safety. And um, uh, what was very interesting story considering um, about about new type of uh, threats, new type of attacks uh, caused by infection infection uh, issues. Um, why? Because um, some of uh, hackers um, used used the more intensive uh, char character uh, of uh, communication. Um, and um, use use this issue to um, to create new threats and new kind of of uh, attacks on a uh, safety critical systems as, as well. Hence, uh, is a first, first point. Second point is related to to more um, more more open space uh, which we can now for um, safety critical systems. Um, considering uh, industrial Internet of Things and so on, there are <laughs> there are um, formula in IoT equals IoT. What does it mean? Internet of Things equals Internet of Threats. Uh, hence, okay. or, <laughs> inter IOE equals IOE is Internet of Everything uh, equals Internet of Emergencies. Hence, uh, more data, more uh, <laughs> IoT and more threats and more um, poss possibility for uh, for attacks. Hence, uh, it's a very important point to to analyze and to, um, to go ahead, considering that um, cybersecurity is very important attributes for, for safety and for uh, big safety uh, as well. And there are, there are statistics of uh, uh, last uh, last years uh, uh, which uh, confirms um, uh, increasing of uh, attacks um, which was um, which uh, caused uh, by different different uh, 
different um, reasons uh, considering um, of course the uh, war as aspect which we have in Ukraine during last last year uh, we, we know about a lot of attacks on our energy systems and now we have hot hot war uh, in addition to to cyber war thank you Yeah, when you exactly. mentioned previously about the increase in digitalization um, that we have in industry now, would you like to add some thoughts on this? Can you repeat the question, please? Um, you mentioned earlier about the increase in digitalization across industries. Uh, well, would you like to add some thoughts about kind of cybersecurity in the context of big safety here? Yeah, well, I think it, I think the most uh, the most points about cyber security, uh, I think, have been made. Uh, I think one mm -hmm. point that we haven't really discussed yet is the AI as aspect of it. I mean, for all this software to be used and to be safe, it also has to be verified and validated. And AI, for AI, pure AI, there's no formal verification system as yet. So that means uh, even making them safe is an open question. Can we even make AI safe? And, it's, and, and in combination with that, most are, yeah, well, the important standards on relation to safety do not consider self-changing systems. So we consider software, we'll consider engineering projects, but we won't consider that the engineer or the system itself will change its own behavior on its own merit. And that's also an, an, a hugely important area of interest where we say, well, lots of information will be used for systems to change themselves and to some extent, leaving their to their own devices in terms of control. And that's also just an unsolved area at this mint. We are not clear of how to do that, and we do certainly don't agree on which would be the right direction to do that. And this is actually where Veritslav has done an awful lot of good work as well. So that's another aspect of the same problem. Uh, yes, I, I could add a few words about uh, artificial intelligence uh, issue in context of uh, safety and, and security as well. Because uh, when you talk about uh, AI, you talk about uh, about AI as an object for uh, intrusion, for attacks, and uh, AI as a means for intrusion and attacks. Hence, uh, we, we, we need we need to take into account different different sides of uh, application yeah. of AI, especially in safety critical system. And so it's a, one of the very important trends in area um, safety and in big safety, as I see. Yeah. So yes, and, and, I mean, one of the things that 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 mm -hmm. you know within within Tino we talk a lot about is that there's there's there seems to be this idea that safety, reliability, and uh, uh, AI, and cyber are different stovepipes, but it's becoming more and more clear that just one and the same thing, AI, cyber, utility, uh, safety verification, they have really become one thing as we all become digitized. So you, easier, earlier it was easy to separate one interest from the other, but it's no, just no longer possible in the modern age where everything just comes together in data systems. A, a, a quick comment. Uh, we are paying the price for democratization of um, digital technology because um, safety was always associated with sort of exclusive systems, military systems, space systems, banking systems, financial systems, medical systems, which were clearly defined and uh, isolated. Now it's uh, not true anymore. You know, it's everywhere. It's uh, everybody has an access to the internet. And not only people have an access to the internet, but as Swaba mentioned, is also AI is the source uh, when uh, AI has an access to the internet. So it's uh, it, on one side, uh, it is sort of a, a heaven for democracy, <laughs> what we are experiencing. But at the same time, this is a hell for us to make sure that this democracy can be enjoyed by everybody, including robots. Thank you. Yeah, that's interesting that you bring that up because what, just from us talking about big safety in general, it seems so big. There's so many, um, like you say, security threats, issues. And as you were saying, Cohen, like everything's so intertwined now. 
how I mean, I'm just thinking, how do you go about tackling that? Um, I mean, your book's not out yet. I haven't read it, but how do you go about kind of addressing big safety when it's so it includes so much? So, so just yes, actually, so this is after the, the, the couple of things that, that we did actually discuss quite a bit before we, you know, started on this project. So the idea was, mm -hmm. it was very clear at the beginning, this is a massive area to be working in. Yeah. And that's, uh, and, and we found this uh, in early meetings, in conferences, and one of the things that's, that, that I guess is, I see as a problem is that it's very disconnected. People are doing very different things without really getting to the same kind of terminology. Uh, 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 and the other thing that we said, well, the first thing we can do is at least lay down some foundations. And rather than, because we have discussed this, let's write a really thick book about this. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. we said, well, actually, maybe to get this started, that would not be the right approach because then you just have, you know, I don't know, a thousand pages of, you know, valuable information. People just get lost in that. It would be better if we get a first, we called it a thin book, I think. Where we say let's just first lay down some foundations, like the ten points that uh, various stuff co comes with, with the the definitions of uh, and the kind of questions you're asking. We say, listen, this is the kind of thing, the space in which we need to be operating, and after that, it would be much easier to say, well, here's a conference, you know, find a hundred contributors and put that together, but at least use some kind of common reference, and that's really what what to go with this. What I think we originally called the the thin book or the small book, so we really want to keep it accessible and clear mm -hmm. and, and, and to make a clear things have really changed and b this is the kind of terminology we think would be good that you would use now we're talking to researchers so they never really listen but at least we can make that effort okay <laughs> where we can say listen this is the kind of thing is this is the kind of terminology this is where you ought to be looking if you can do this kind of work you could actually position yourself in this area of big safety rather than just going off and and you know, making papers without really understanding what you're doing. I think that's a that's a very valuable point. You, you mentioned establishing that that common vocabulary of okay, what is that that allows you to actually talk about the, the problem across sort of industries ac across different professions. Um, I'm, I'm just just wondering. Um, we, we we talked about cybersecurity being one of those you know fundamental building blocks that that plays a role in that um how how do you go about engaging um you know relevant stakeholders that that sort of bring bring other parts of this like how maybe that's that's a, a question of you know how did you go about writing the book uh, about you know defining that that core of of what is big safety Uh, I, 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 I don't fully know the history, but from my perspective, this started, this discussion started because I've been passionate about this for quite a while and I go to lots of lectures where I say, listen, guys, you've got to stop work, working with Excel and get serious about safety when you work in the digital age. And um, uh, I think first left and myself, we met in Selenia uh, where we said, yeah, we could do better with this. We could, uh, we could do this better. And then uh, it pretty quickly we came uh, to Fire Slabs network that uh, that Andre and Miguel would be you know very useful contributors in this as well. And then we said actually so there's four AI safety professors or, or digital safety professors coming together on this space, you know, willing uh, uh, to listen to each other and, and to, willing to share ideas. And we, we thought it was a pretty bright span already, you know, given the fact that they were quite you know geographically in different areas and have quite different backgrounds. So we, we already thought thought it was a stretch. <laughs> I'm not sure whether we got yeah, a separate, I don't know, a, a, a cybersecurity expert in it would help. And then yeah, to, in, to, in, in many ways, I think uh, Andre and, and Varislav also cover large parts of that as well. So I'm not sure we need that for this particular book. I think it would overcomplicate or complicate even more. <laughs> that, that sure, I'm formulating it. Of course, as, as you said, this is sort of the, the first step and hopefully, you know, interest in that picks up and, and more people start contributing in, in that direction. But, but you are right. I mean, this, this, this is, so this is really the first step. And, and I think we already had discussion about what would the next step be. And, and so the question of how would we engage people? So that's not a question we haven't asked ourselves. But mm -hmm. But yeah, we would actually we would have to think that a, a bit uh, uh, through a bit further when we you know put some things on paper and get some clear idea of how, which way this will turn out. 
And I, I, I could add a few words. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, uh, this uh, our um, book is just umbrella umbrella before uh, before uh, next uh, next books or next researches as uh, said the coin uh, Andrei Mikhail. Um, uh, we <coughs> try to to describe uh, general issues related to all chain of responsibility um, people. I mean regulator. Uh, developers, engineers, managers, operators, and so on. And maybe <coughs> next step will be related to big safety culture, similar safety and security culture uh, which we know na now. And so <coughs> it's just a really start point for for motion to ahead, motion ahead. <coughs> Sorry. You touched on a point there about kind of responsibility uh, within big safety um, and you mentioned some people kind of responsible. Yeah, I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on kind of who is responsible for big safety. Is it kind of everyone involved in industry or the particular parties that are particularly responsible? Well, see, see, to me, it's still cowboy time. We're still li living the cowboy time. I, 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 I always look back at, from my perspective at, from the railways in the UK. Okay, so, th so the revolution of steam on the railway was a massive, you know, technological advance which had huge implications, you know, worldwide, socially, et cetera, et cetera. And we basically, you know, in the beginning area, it was cowboys, right? Everybody was making money, everybody do, was doing whatever they wanted, and nobody really cared about the damage or the people killed or this or that until, until at some point said listen we really need to do something about this for me in the big safety and ai area within the cowboy area anyone could do whatever they want as long as it makes money and that's where i think uh, that point of realization was say actually we are in the cowboy time and if you want to change this we'll, there will be some responsibility somebody will have to take responsibility now, typically, we look at governments for that, and well, the EU is actually looking into that, but but that's not the only ones. I think software suppliers, uh, uh, manufacturers, all have their own roles to play. But really, accepting that role in terms of uh, uh, can we really keep the world as safe if we want it to be? That that we're still very far away from that. I think uh, decades. I think. <coughs> Well, to answer your question, I, I also have a couple of comments about that. To answer your question, we have been debating and trying to, who is, where's the beef? Okay, talking about cowboys and uh, who is <laughs> who is guilty and so on and so forth. And my personal opinion is uh, that there is no uh, proper organization uh, which would take the responsibility of what we are trying to do. I consider our work as a part of a grand challenge for the whole community. So I'm pessimistic in that sense that uh, I don't see any recipe ready to go which would take what we are trying to do and implement this in, 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 in real life. But if this is the case, I think this is our responsibility as scientists to take a lead and to try to start this uh, building this new culture and uh, trying to make uh, the awareness and try to take a lead and prosto and 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 simply uh, i'm sorry i said one more in in russian and and, and and to start this new era of the discussion that they really need to take take uh, care of those those issues this is our responsibility at this stage of the game okay great um my favorite slightly coming to the end of our time um, but just one last um, point I, I I know you may want to talk about. Um, so with the war in Ukraine at the moment, I know you're adding some content potentially to the book on this. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, would you like to give your thoughts on this in the context of big safety? Um, a few weeks ago, uh, uh, we um, discussed with um, Professor Yastrevinetsky, uh, Andrzej Rusinski, um, issues, new issues for big, big safety, the military, military um, safety. Mm -hmm. we, now we have in Ukraine really uh, state uh, terrorism, state nuclear mm -hmm. terrorism. I mean, I mean <clears throat> attacks 
on our nuclear power plants. Uh, and so I, I uh, we, uh, analyzed the um, existing uh, documents of um, International Atomic uh, Energy um, Agency, and um, these documents do documents describe just just uh, some terrorist, not terrorism in point of view uh, state, in point of view uh, military military issues. And so we. We, I hope, very shortly describe uh, will describe in uh, our books this issue. It is an additional additional <coughs> side for uh, big safety, the military issue, military in point of view in point of view technical issue. Uh, and as said, Andre, we need um, we need to think about uh, uh, global uh, global understanding this threat because the, there are country with NPP, nuclear power plants, and uh, not nuclear power plants. There are um, countries with nuclear weapon and uh, no nuclear weapon. Hence, uh, um, it is a new challenges. Uh, in, in, and in Ukraine, we uh, very <clears throat> good understand um, this situation in, um, during this, um, uh, this incredible uh, war. Um, yeah, and as we kind of come to the end, does anybody have any kind of final thoughts they want to add to that? Uh, I, I would like to to say something about the final thoughts. Uh, mm -hmm. The final thoughts about is are about the future, and um, we strongly believe that uh, the human face of our civilization is going to prevail. And we are going to overcome everything what we are experiencing. And we deeply believe in that. And that's what we are doing this. Thank you. Any other final thoughts? Anybody? I, I, I just uh, say about, uh, thank you, um, uh, our colleagues. Uh, thank you, Andre. Thank you, Cohen. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Philippa. Thank you, uh, Hans, for the organization of this meeting. Um, it, it, this meeting um, is very interesting discussion for us. I think I see the result of our discussion um, will reflect in a, a few um, additional pages of our uh, book as well. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.